Hey, what is going on, guys? It is Dion back with a daily fan duel lineup building video for today, February 25th. Uh, do doing this kind of late. I uh, should have did it last night, but I was feeling kind of tired. So, like, might as well just get into it today. I didn't want to stop putting out content. I want to be consistent with the video. So, thought, I thought I'd do it today. So, uh, I know a lot of you guys probably be upset that I, knew I didn't do a live stream, but uh, I was cautious because there's people doing, like, some construction outside. So, if it kind of messed up with the audio... Uh, they didn't really want to, uh, didn't really want to have that all in the background, so, uh, that's part of the reason why I'm doing it here, but, uh, yeah, we can talk, right, we can jump right into it, man, uh, we can start out with the point guard like we always do, first of all, we got Russell Westbrook at 10.9k versus the New Orleans Pelicans, this game is gonna be up in, this game is gonna be up in pace, won't be defense from either side, uh, Russell Westbrook is on the second leg of a back-to-back, -back, and he just had a pretty disappointing game last uh, last night, so um, well as far as as far as his price goes, he still put up 50, but uh, for most of the night, he was struggling. Um, he didn't feel anywhere like he'll get. He got at least he got at least 20 of his Fanduel points in like I'd say like the bottom of the third and uh in the fourth quarter, but uh, he was pretty much struggling, man. 10.9, no, but he will be facing a faster paced team with a team that doesn't play as much defense as Dallas, so. Uh, we got Russell Westbrook in a nice spot at 10.9. We all know that his upside is a little bit limited. Like, he's never going to hit you. He's never going to get, like, a 70-point game or anything just playing with uh, Durant. But uh, Westbrook, he's in a nice spot, man. I like him here. I think he has 60, point, 60 to 65-point upside here just because of this matchup. They're on the road, so they're probably going to look for him to score a little bit more. But uh, I like him here. The usage is up. Uh, everything about him is up, so um, especially against a team, a New Orleans team that's really going to be heavily dependent on Drew Holiday and AD. I like Russell Westbrook to eat here. Uh, but uh, we can take a look at the over-under, man. We're going to look at the implied points. That's what I like to do. I like to go on Daily Fantasy Cafe and look at the implied points. So they're pretty much projected to put about 113, so uh, 220 over-under. I, I like that form here, so... Uh, he's definitely in play. Next, we got Steph Curry. God, I'm high on today. Um, just when you look at it on paper, uh, this is the wrong thing I was looking at. Uh, I'm about to go to the lineups. Just when you look at it on paper, man, the, the matchup that stands out the most to me. Oh, Victor Oladipo's out. Hold on. Okay, he's considered questionable, so, okay, we're not going we're not going to overreact to that. But, um... When you look at it on paper, when you look at it on paper now, it would be Clay versus Evan Fournier. But uh, if Oladipo's playing, man, I think Curry's kind of like locked into at least one of my lineups. We know his upside is there. He's in the uh, second lane of back to back. But uh, I just lo I just love Curry here today, man. Um, especially if this game stays close, which is projected to. What is the spread again? We can take a look on Vegas. Uh, it's only an eight and a half point spread. Whenever the whenever the Warriors are in double digit favorites, uh, you might as well just you just have to have some exposure to that game. So I like them a lot here. They're on the road. So um, man, if Oladipo plays, that that definitely definitely merits playing some Curry in my lineup. His usage rate. We can go take a look at it. What it's been in what the last few games or so. Um, oh, I can't. Okay, I'm bugging. Right, so in the last four games for the Warriors, his usage rate, usage percentage is at 35.1. So that's super high, man. That's up there with the elite. Well, of course, we know he's an elite guy. But uh, up there with the ADs, the DeMarcus Cousins. We know DeMarcus Cousins way up there. Uh, Damian Lillard. So uh, I love I love Curry here in this spot, man. Especially I, I love Curry, especially when they play on the road. I just feel like he's going to be the one. Uh, that he, it just feels like he always goes off in the road game. Like if you can find me, the only road games I could think of he didn't do good in is this Philly in New York. Um, well the Philly that's kind of disappointing, but they were blowing them out and then they came back. The uh, Philly came back out of nowhere, so I'm not gonna hold that to him. Then the New York game, he just had a horrible shoot night. But how often are we gonna see 13 actual points from Curry? Not too often. So, um, I definitely love Curry here today, man. I gotta see what's his. His like his fantasy output on home road games. I'll be interested to see that. I want to actually go go to ESPN real quick. Actually, I'm gonna go to ESPN real quick. Uh, let's see. I just want to see his home road splits. Never actually really paid attention to it, but I'm pretty sure he's averaging more points on the road. So he's averaging 27 points at home and 32 on the road. So uh, I kind of figured that'd be that. 
be that situation just because uh he's like he's the most confident guy out there. He's the he's the most talented and all. The guy's just not gonna really feel that comfortable as comfortable as he does. So I love Curry, especially on road games, and I think he's in the great spot here. So ten point eight, you have no problem with him. A uh, high usage rate. Uh has the most upside of anybody on this court. I mean on, on this slate, but maybe the exception of like an A D or so. So I think A D yeah, A D and Curry have the Maybe James Harden's up there, but I, I lean more towards Curry and uh, AD having the highest ceiling of anybody here. So I like Curry a lot today at 10.8. And it's just a pivot off of Westbrook, man. Um, Westbrook is safer, but uh, Curry has a higher ceiling. So for tournaments, which is what I'm most likely going to be joining today, love Curry. Next, we got Damian Lillard, 9,500. Just go, Let's go look at his usage rate from the last few games that they played. It's about... 34.5 in the last three games, so I love that here. This game's definitely going to be up and pace. The, the Rockets don't play much defense at all. We can actually go look at their efficiency and see that. I uh, don't have it up right now. Let's go check out Hollinger. See where they rank in defensive efficiency. So, oh, crap, that's the best. Let's go see the worst. So, right now, Houston's basically a bottom five team in defensive efficiency. And they're up there in pace, so they're a team that's up there in pace, so I definitely like picking on them a lot. And then you got Lillard coming into this situation with a good matchup. Let's go take a look at some DVP now. Okay, we got some DVP on the season. All right, let's go see fantasy output. See where Houston ranks. Okay, so they're they're pretty much uh in the mid in the mid range area, but man, Lillard's so explosive. Uh, I'm not even really too worried about that, and it's not it's not the craziest drop off here. Um. From 42 to what the average is around 44, 45. Only the Lakers are just super horrible. Everybody else, I think this is a good spot to play Lillard in. I'm um, not really scared of any Patrick Beverly defense. The guy hasn't really been good on defense all year. Let's go take a look at some stats for him. And I'm actually going to try to make this video a little bit quicker, man. I know you guys are probably tired of seeing the hour-long videos. Uh, so let's see where he ranks here on defense. So giving up about 111 points per 100 possessions. So... Patrick Beverly, definitely somebody we can pick on. And he's a hack, man. I don't. I always thought he was an overrated defender anyway. I thought he was just more of a hack that got away with a bunch of being overly aggressive. And ref just didn't really call it. But, uh, man, we see we can actually see what Lillard did to him last time. So, uh, he Lillard had, he had a decent game last. The first time around, didn't really go off. Then the second time came back with a 50-point game at home. So, uh, I guess we can kind of see what the home road splits do to him. So, I like Lillard a lot here. I uh, have no problem with him. Uh, I'll probably ro I'm most likely a roster him over Curry if when, when I really think about it, man. Just because, man, I think Houston keeps this game a lot closer. Like, I'm always scared of a blow with uh, uh, Golden State. But they are on the second leg with back-to-back. -back, so, uh, it's kind of tough for me right here. And Lillard and Curry have similar usage. And let's see what Portland's projected to put up. I don't think they have it up here yet. No, they don't have it up. They haven't did the math. But let's go on Vegas. So, uh... A 218 over under and the OKC game. I mean, the Golden State game is 222. So, I mean, they're pretty much going to put up around the same amount of points. So, uh, I think, I think, I think, uh, Lillard's in a great spot here. I like him, and it's close to spread. So, there's always a possibility of overtime. So, uh, don't really want to bank on that, but I like Lillard here. Now, IT2 versus Milwaukee. When you look at it on paper, he's going to start a matchup with, uh, with OJ Mayo, but Michael Carter Williams is gonna see a lot of those minutes, so I'm not not really too frank with him. And right now we just have so many disappointing he just has too many disappointing games right now. And uh my favorite play from the scene, we're gonna get onto it, but uh I'm just not too high on IT two. Let's he had an eighteen versus Milwaukee last time. That's not really stopping me from playing him. But uh, I'm just just throwing out that number. Uh I'm not sold on him today. Um, at that price tag, uh, if you're t if you're looking to take down the tournament, you want a little bit more than 30, 38 here at that price. So, uh, we'll look elsewhere. Uh, and I think too, he's up there in usage rate. So, uh, let's go take a look at that real quick. Let's see, Boston. All right. So twenty eight point eight usage rate. That's pretty darn good. And uh, let's go see the implied totals from that game as well. So they projected to put about a 100, 112 points. So uh, I'm almost certain that's right behind OKC, Golden State, and maybe Portland. They might be ahead of Portland. I'm not about to do the math. So 
Uh, we can kind of move on there. Drew Holiday, I love him for tournaments. Let's look at his usage rate. Yeah. And the thing with Drew Holiday, he's super safe, man. Like, uh, 32.0 usage rate in the last three games is pretty high. OKC doesn't play much defense. Um, I'm almost certain that he's going to explode in this game. Uh, he got 42 versus them last time. And I was on the road. Now they're at home in a good environment where I almost expect them to, like, to go off. So, uh, his two worst games in the last two were on the road. Uh, all, look at all his home games. 49 versus Philly. 42 versus Utah. 34. Well, I mean, he didn't really have to do much versus the Lakers. That was, a, I think, AD went off in that game. No, yeah, bad game versus Memphis. But that's a slow pace. We're talking about OKC here. The usage is way up. He's just killing it. The floor is, the floor is great. And he has 50-point sailing. So, I love Drew Holiday here. High usage. I'll likely roster him in the tournament, too. It's kind of tough to figure out point guards today. I think this is the best spot to go contrarian today. I think a lot of guys, I think we know some of the chalky players already. So, uh, you can definitely go contrarian here with Drew Holiday in tournaments. I like him. No, I'm not I'm not looking at night. I just want to see. Okay. Damn, he's been out with a groin injury for like a year. But uh, we'll, we'll keep moving on. MCW in a fast-paced game. But I usually tend to stay away from point guards versus Boston. But at that price tag... We seen what he did last time, uh, but he was actually in starting lineup, so that take he he probably had to, he probably had some it two defense, so uh, things will be different around, be different this time around. But uh, he's still gonna be guarded by like guys like Marcus Smart or whatnot, so uh, still undersized guys. So, but I don't think he has much upside in this matchup. That's the only thing I'll take away from him. Uh, Marcus Smart, what's going on? Okay, that has been okay. So there's no news on him, but uh. He's a guy that I like a little bit in tournaments. Um, I, for some strange reason, I feel like uh, Boston might blow these guys out. Um, we can kind of move on there. I'm never playing Alfred Payton. Patrick Beverly is a guy I like in tournaments. He's going against uh, Portland, who's had their, a little bit of struggles versus uh, point guard sometimes. But Patrick Beverly's not a high usage guy. And we just seen a little bit of upside from him. Utah at yeah, 27-34 against uh, Phoenix. 24 Golden State, 26 Phoenix, 22 Miami, 30 Washington, 28 OKC. So he has some upside, but for some strange reason, he's horrible versus Portland. 5 versus Portland in 28 and 12.2 versus Portland. I mean, maybe that's because uh, Damian Lillard is wearing them out on uh, offense so much that his defense is, I don't know. I mean, wearing so much, wear him so much out on uh, defense that he just doesn't have any offense. I don't know what's the problem with him, but... Uh, I'll probably fade him there just because I don't know. I don't see the upside with him today. And there's guys like I like Donald Sloan versus Phoenix, one of the worst teams versus point guards. He's in a great spot. Not a super high usage guy, but he's shown enough upside uh, that I can merit playing him, man. He's played 30 minutes in the last three, so uh, he's trending upward in 30 minutes versus uh, Phoenix. Can't go wrong there. So I like Sloan. We'll take a look at his usage. It's not really been that good, but uh, we'll take a look anyway. So, in the last three games, his usage rate has been about 16.9. That's not great. As well. That's not anywhere near great. But um, at his price tag versus Phoenix, uh, I think he can still have a great game here. I'm not, I'm not going to totally crap on him. He's shown enough upside, so I like him. He's definitely going to be in my pool of players to, uh, for tournaments. So, we can kind of move on now. Uh, I don't really like Shelvin Mack, even at that price tag. I think I think he's probably better off suited off the bench, man. I don't know if, if putting him in the starting lineup was a good idea because you got guys like Rodney Hood, Derek Favors, and Gordon Hayward that kind of need the ball, so you can't really work freely as much. So I think that kind of takes away from his upside. But man, thirty seven hundred for a guy who's shown us thirty point upside, uh, I can't really knock it. But the Spurs are a great team, so probably don't want to pick on them there. And then a guy that people are sleeping on today. That I might roster in a tournament was he at. Uh, here you go. Phil Pressy, man. This dude's played 28 minutes in back-to-back -back games. And he's getting the game versus Brooklyn, who struggles versus point guards. Let's go take a look at the DVP. So, Brooklyn, bottom five team versus point guards. So, Phil Pressy, 28 minutes. He's going to be super low on today. He could be real sneaky here. So, I like him a lot. Um, wouldn't put much stock into him. Let's go take a look at his usage. <laughs> So in the last, uh, where's he at? So in the last, in the last two games, he had a 16.2, and that's pretty much the same as Sloan, but he's seeing two less minutes. So 
but he's also a lot cheaper than Sloan, so. Uh, and there's also a bunch of guys on Phoenix, so that's probably why I would probably look away from him. At least I know Sloan's one of the main contributors that he might get, he might have the leeway to do whatever he wants. Um, so, uh, we also, we're gonna, we're pretty much done with point guards. We're gonna move on to shooting guard. Of course, James Harden's a given, but at that price tag, I think there's too much value for me to play him today. But uh, I love him here versus CJ McCollum. The price tag is up, man. He needs 55 here. But he got 57 versus Portland last time in 42 minutes. I'm not really going to bank on that. Uh, so I'll probably move on. But uh, he's not a bad player at all. So super high usage. Let's go take a look at that. Uh, Houston. All right, so a 35.9 usage rate. His usage is through the roof in the last two games. It's not really a big sample size, but uh, it's pretty much what he's been doing all season, so I like him there. Then we have CJ McCollum versus Harden, one of the worst defenders in the league. Let's see what they rank in DVP, because I don't think they're actually that bad in DVP. But uh, we know Harden as an individual defender isn't really good, so uh, we got to take that into account. But uh, they're still bottom 10 team versus two guards as far as DVP goes, so... It's a matter to play in CJ McCollum, and McCollum's been heating up back-to-back 30-point games. So that's what's kind of scaring me a little bit off a little bit, but uh, I still like I still like Lillard a little bit. So, uh, yeah, we got CJ McCollum, 7,600. Scoring dependent, but, uh, man, he's been doing it. Uh, Chris Middleton versus Boston. I'm not really a fan of playing guards versus Boston, but... Uh, Man, he's been he's been he's been pretty solid, man. And at his price tag, you need thirty five plus. He just hasn't been doing that lately. This not really the matchup for him to do it. He played thirty eight versus last time at home. And he only got thirty, so I'm like you're gonna fade him here. This isn't a great spot for him. Uh, Clay. Man, I don't like his matchup individually with Oladipo, but uh, we have seen what Clay's been doing, man. He's been lighting it up. Uh, back to look at this fifty. 38-43, so he's heating up right now. So this is a guy that I probably that I probably have to have on my radar, man, just because he's showing up. So he's been scoring depending the past, but, uh, man, he's scoring at a high rate right now. So I uh, can't really knock him. I feel like you almost have to have Curry or Clay in at least one lineup. Like uh, one of those guys is going to crush value, and you just want to be part of it. And I'm not too high on Draymond Green today versus Aaron Gordon, so. Uh, that's, that's where I stand right there. As far as that goes, Clay Thompson, let's go take a look at his usage. Okay, so in the last four games, he has a 30.1 usage rate. Um, that's pretty darn high, so I like that there. Let's see what he ranks as opposed to McCollum's usage rate, so we kind of see what that's like. Okay, McCollum's been a 28.4, so, and they're both scoring dependent, so I guess you kind of... Kinda give the uh the uh the nod to him, to Clay in that part in that category, but uh man, I think Oladipo is a way better defender than James Harden, so uh it, it's tough. But uh next we got Victor Oladipo. I think he plays here today. Uh this dude's been playing 41 minutes almost every game. Uh I think he I think he has enough upside. And this game's gonna be super up there in pace. Uh Golden State. They haven't been, they haven't really been blowing teams out lately. And if this game stays close, I think Oladipo has a large part to do with it. Uh, I know, I know he had a disappointing game. As he's well, he started out slow and he ended up making up for it in the fourth quarter. But uh, I don't see Vucevic and Aaron Gordon really being like going crazy like they did last time. Let's go take a look at Gordon and Vuce real quick. Show you what they did last time. So. Uh, well, it wasn't really more about Gordon. He he filled up the stat sheet, so that's possible for him to get 11-11. But uh, Fusevich, I don't see him going crazy like this, and I think they'll be heavily dependent upon guys like Aaron Gordon and uh, Fournier here. So, Fuz 35 real points last time. He's not doing that to the Golden State Warriors. So, and this game is still projected to stay a little bit, stay close a little bit. Oladipo's playing 40 minutes versus a fast-paced team who hasn't been the greatest on defense right now. So. Old Depot 6900, he's definitely in play. I'm not really too worried about a thigh bruise. Uh, they hold him out of they hold him out of practice on Wednesday, but uh, man, I think that's just precautionary. Uh, and this thigh bruise, man, people get over that every day, man. You can play through a thigh bruise. Uh, just hurts a little bit, and then he he should be well rested. I think he plays today. I definitely don't see him sitting out versus Golden State. Like people look forward to playing Golden State just just because of that 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 look it gives them. And uh, let's see if this is actually a nationally televised game, man. Uh, 
that might not really be like a a real uh factor in 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 uh making lines. Okay, no, it's not. Uh, it comes on seven. Uh, nationally televised games. OKC, New Orleans, and Houston, Portland. So uh, yeah, but I still like Oladipo a lot here. Rodney Hood versus the Spurs is kind of a fade to me. No, no need to really talk about that game. That game in a whole, that game as a whole is kind of a, pretty much a fade to me. So I look elsewhere. Avery Bradley. Tournament option. Uh, he actually had a great game versus Milwaukee last time. What people don't realize. No, oh, also, oh, to talk about Oladipo. I have to show this stat real quick. Let's go to Golden State. People don't realize, but I think like uh, Clay's actually been the worst defender on that on that Golden State team individually as far as stats goes, defensive rating. So uh, definitely don't be too scared to uh, play guys against him, man. Um, Pretty much, he's he's known as a good defender, but uh, for the fast pace they play, he, it's hard to be perfect. So, I like Oladipo there. Um, Avery Bradley, she's gonna get he's gonna get some Chris Middleton defense. Not a high usage guy. Let's go take a look at him. Or is he? Uh, let's see. So he has about a twenty one point two usage rate. That's that's actually pretty decent, man. Cause I think Oladipo's been around the same thing. Uh, let's take a look. Oladipo, so he has he actually has a higher usage rate than Oladipo, and he's in a fast-paced game here with Milwaukee, who, who kind of struggles on defense just as much. So uh, let's go take a look at Milwaukee's uh, defensive efficiency. I didn't take a look at that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Did I just see something? The Nets wave J Joe Johnson. Wow. That is crazy. The Nets wave Joe Johnson. Oh, my God. Uh, I guess I guess guess I'm about to lock in some Wayne Ellington to my lineup, man. The dude or some Bogdan uh, Bojan Bogdanovic. I did not see that coming at all. Uh, this new GM that just came over from the Spurs is cleaning house, I guess. Uh, but what was I looking at again to see defense efficiency for Milwaukee? Uh, oh, Milwaukee is a bottom ten team in the defense efficiency, and uh, the Boston's actually one of the top five teams. So. Uh, and they're actually up there in offense as well, and it's a home game, so there's always a possibility to blow out. Let's go see how favored they are versus Milwaukee today. Eight-point favorites is pretty much the same. I predicted something like that. So uh, at home, man, Boston's been pretty good, so uh, there's always a possibility of a blowout. But now we got to talk about Evan Fournier. I think he's in a great spot. Fast-paced game, man. You just lock him in for cash games. I think he's locked for cash. Then we got Joe Johnson. Oh, he got... Okay, buyout negotiations. Wow. The Nets have bought... Wow. They brought out Joe Johnson. That's crazy. Uh, I wonder where he's going to go. That's big news there because now we have to look at guys like Wayne Ellerton versus Phoenix. He's playing 19 minutes a game, 19 to 20 something. Then we got to look at Bodon. Bodon on the shooting guard? No, he's on the small forward, but he's been playing 22. So uh, definitely going to see an uptake in minutes. Markel Brown. He's definitely in play. Okay, so he's been playing. He, his minutes have been up. So man, and I think that bumps up. Uh, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna, we have to wait to that. We're gonna have to wait till I get to that position actually. So uh, we got Archie Go in there. They oh, they moved on the shooting guard. That sucks. But uh, he's still playing every minutes. But I don't like his production. So he's a fade for me. Devin Booker. Uh, pretty much a fade to me. His minutes have been down. And until his price goes a little bit more down, he's a fade. Danny Green not playing him versus Rodney Hood. Slow pace game. I told you that guy that game is a fade. Maybe OJ Mayo's worth a tournament option, but I stay away from guards versus uh versus Boston. So I look elsewhere. Wayne Ellerton's now in a great spot. He's been starting between close to twenty minutes, so I definitely want to see if he's gonna I definitely think he might get a bump in minutes. And actually that Joe Johnson Joe Johnson being released really gives that bump to Donald Sloan, I think, honestly speaking. So I like Wayne Elton, Markel Brown, tournament option. He's got other tournament options. Then we can kind of move on from there. Next, we got Small Forward. Uh, Durant's pretty much going to be the highest on guy. I think he's the safest guy, actually, as well. Really can't see him getting less than 45 here. Pelicans don't play much defense at all. Uh, really not any real rebounders on that team either. So KD might... KD... KD's kind of a must. Even in tournaments, I think he gets 50-plus. So, uh, let's see what he did. Okay, he kind of struggled versus New Orleans last time. It was a home game. It might have been a blowout, so I'm not going to really hold that against him too much. 
But uh, here on my channel, man, I like to fact check. So let's go take a look at that. Uh, let's see what he was that game a blowout at home. K one twenty one ninety five. Yeah, that game was a blowout. So he pretty much just chilled the home game. Didn't have to do much. So uh, this game, let's see the Vegas odds. Okay, so five. It's only a five point spread. So this game definitely projects to stay close. I guess being that New Orleans is at home. So. I uh, like I like I love KD here today. Uh, no way I'm fading him. Giannis, that price tag just bumped up too much for me, man. I can't really bank on 40 from him, but he's been producing. I don't think this is a great matchup versus Boston. Uh, they're pretty much a they're a top five defense. They just play up and pace, so that's what kind of uh, messes their. D that's why they might give up a bunch of points, but uh, I just don't think this is a great matchup for him. He only had 30 last time versus Boston. Not gonna hold that to him too much, but uh. I don't really like to pick on Boston one through three. Where I pick on Boston is the uh, power forward and center. So, uh, yeah, I think we kind of move on now. Kawhi Leonard in a slow-paced game. Uh, I do like his individual matchup. I think he had a great game versus Utah earlier in the season. Um, but man, uh, that he's he might be limited. They said they were limit limiting his minutes last game. So, uh, versus Sacramento, he only played twenty-eight. So. Uh, let's go see what he did versus Jazz in two games. So he's averaging 18-5. Not really too impressive. So it's a slow-paced game. You probably just want to avoid it. And he might still be limited. So don't really want to take too much uh, too much stock in those guys. Going to Hayward Fade. Jake Crowder. Uh, my rule, I'm never playing him above 6K. So uh, this is kind of my rule. I'm not, I'm not doing it. And I'm not going to fall for that trap. So... Uh, I wouldn't say he's a horrible play. I just would not play him buffs. Okay, that's me. Let's see what he did versus Milwaukee last time. He had 31. He actually had 31 too, so uh, he might be in play, but uh, just for me, I don't like him here. Uh, Trevor Reza versus Portland. Uh, don't think this is a great spot for him. Now that they're back to playing a bigger lineup, with uh, instead of having him at the uh, four, I think that kind of decreases his uh, his value here, and I don't really like him too much. Uh, he did have two great games here, but I'm not really going to bank on these kind of outputs from Trevor Reza. I don't think he presents that much upside for me, man. I think a lot of I think the guys is probably going to feast the most today. Probably be James Harden from the Rockets. Uh, James Harden. Uh, maybe Josh Smith and Dwight. So I don't really think Ariza is going to have too much of an impact there. Evan Turnon. This is a guy I love in tournaments. A 5,700 guy, high usage. Uh, he gets 28 minutes here. He's definitely going to produce. Milwaukee's not that great on defense. I think this is a great spot for him. He actually he played 30 minutes last time, had 26 fan duel points, and right now all we really want from him is 26. To tw in tournaments, you probably want 30. In cash, you'll probably be fine with 27, something like that. So I uh, definitely think he gets that here in this kind of a game. And he has a decent usage rate. We'll take a look at it real quick. Uh, let's see. Let's see, okay, so it might have dropped. It might actually drop, but 17.2. Still don't think it's horrible, but with him off the bench, I think that's not too bad, man. I think he's going to see a bunch of these shot attempts, so he's going to have a bunch of shot attempts. So he fills up the stat sheet. I think I think usage has more to do with scoring and stuff like that. But, uh, man, I definitely love Evan Turner here in this kind of a game, fast-paced. They're projected to put up 112 points, and I think a lot of that comes from Evan Turner, so have no problem with them here. Uh, next we got I Minus. Mean, look past him. I like Harrison Barnes a little bit versus Evan Fournier. Thirty minutes versus Fournier, not too bad. But I also like Curry and Clay a little bit, so that might take a take a lot away from uh, Harrison Barnes and upside. But uh, you get a twenty five point game from him here, man. That's great, man. That's what I'm looking for from him, and I think that's very possible. So uh, I don't have too much problem with him there. Uh, next we'll move on though. P.J. Tucker versus Brooklyn. If he sees 30 minutes, if he's seen over 30 minutes, then I could play him. But uh, the way he's the way his game log is looking right now, uh, it's just too hard to trust. And I'm not sure he presents enough upside. So I'll probably look elsewhere, man. So right now, my my favorite small forwards, uh, K.D. and Evan Turner, Mo Harkless. Uh, don't I know people fell for those traps, man. He had two great game, three great games. He played out of his mind. And then he he showed you he went back to being normal. So uh, I think this is one of those situations where I probably want to wait. Like I think he's still gonna see like about 20 minutes, but I probably want to wait till his price drops a little bit lower to play him here. So 
uh, not too high on him yet. Iguodala, I think he has a little bit of upside here, just in case this game turns to a blowout. I think he's great. Uh, also, we have Bo John, man. He's going to be super high on now that Joe Johnson's out of there. Uh, they're probably going to announce him in the starting lineup. He's probably going to start, but uh, I think I like him a little bit more off the bench, man. I hope he doesn't start just off just off the principle that I can get you probably get him low on the tournament. So uh, like that. Next we kind of move on to power forward AD. Uh, it's a good luck, man. We just seen Dirk kill Ibaka, so we're not really too scared of AD. We're not really scared of uh, Ibaka here in this situation. But uh, OKC is one of the better rebounding teams, so I probably don't want to. Tr trust ad unless i feel like he's going to get you over 30 actual points so uh, i'm not really going to bank on that so i'll probably look elsewhere at power forward but he's in a good spot here draymond green versus aaron gordon not the greatest of matchups uh he's been he's been flopping lately man uh we need about we need about 42 to 45 from him here and uh 38 and 26 not cutting it and he did this versus a bad rebound team. I just think Aaron Gordon is actually a pretty good defender. So, uh, unless he's getting, what, unless he's racking up on these triple doubles again, uh, I'm not really failing him there. But uh, it, it's always possible. But uh, I'm not high on him right now. I don't think he's gonna hit his. Don't think he has uh, that much upside here at that price tag yet in this matchup. Derek Favors of Faye, Alders of Faye, Daddy Shunks definitely in play versus Phoenix. I like this. I like his individual matchup versus. Uh, Chris Humphreys was the game okay. Oh, they actually got Alex Lennon starting lineup. That's that's not that's that's ugly. But uh, I don't think Alex Lennon's gonna start with Tyson Chandler. I think they're probably gonna put Humphreys back in the lineup. So uh, I like Daddy's Young versus Humphreys. He's playing a bunch of minutes here. So 36. He's played 38. He played 36 at least 36 in the last three. I think this is actually a great spot from other times. The other two games, I don't think those were great spots. So. Uh, He's especially with Joe Johnson going down, his use is going to bump up, so I like him there. Sullinger's in a great spot versus Milwaukee. Man, when he sees 30, yo, know, he's a point per minute beast, so he's not on Jokic's level, but when he sees 30 minutes, and he, he he goes off, so I like him a lot here. There's no Kelly Olenek, so there's not even a back to back game from the play, so uh, he's definitely probably locked in for 30 minutes today. I think he's in a great spot. Now, I want to take a look at his home road splits because you look at his home game, he's killing it, and he's a point-per-minute piece. Uh, that was against Sacramento. Can't really, cut, uh, can't really consider that. But against the Clippers, 30, 30 minutes, 46 Fanduel points. So uh, we'll take a look at that real quick. And I am the master of saying I'm going to make a video fast. Try to make a quick video, but uh, I end up being here forever. So uh, let's go take a look at his splits. So it's not really. So when you look at it, it's not really too big of a difference. But I guess it's because we're not seeing, we're not seeing consistent minutes from him. So uh, it's kind of really hard to tell. It's only about a two point difference. Uh, still not nothing's really standing out here. So uh, man, I get, I still like Selinger a lot here. Uh, the home road splits probably doesn't mean anything, but I still like him a lot. Uh, not a high usage guy, but against Milwaukee, one of the teams that's not that great in rebounding. And they're projected to lose. That means a bunch of missed shots. Uh, the eight point, the eight point underdog. So, if you're really implying that they're gonna miss a bunch of shots, man, I think Selger's in a great spot. And we seen, we seen him had great games versus Milwaukee already. What he had? Oh, that was only in 20 minutes, but he got to 22. So, uh, and I was with uh Kelly Olynyk and Amir Johnson playing. So getting those minutes. So 30 minutes here is a great spot for him. Her Jabaka kind of a fade for me. Jabari Parker's probably a lock. Look at what he's been producing, man. Um, damn, man. Look at the minutes. Like, uh, it's kind of hard to fade him, and the production has been there. He's getting you, gotten you over thirty in the last four games, and that's probably that's that's already uh surpassing value there. So I like him a lot here. Ryan Anderson versus OKC in a fast-paced game. This is also a great spot for him. He only played 25 minutes last game, which is disappointing. But uh, he's kind of streaky with his shot, so always worth a always worth a tournament option. Elias Silva in a fast-paced game. Maybe they might try to they might play him a, a bunch more to spread the floor, just because they're going against Golden State and it's a faster-paced game. So uh, he might be sneaky here if he gets 20 if he gets something like 23 minutes or anything like that, 23 25 minutes. So. Uh, just a little bit too risky for my liking. Next, we got to Ledovich. 
playing 23, 29. Uh, the minutes are all over the place, but uh, the Clippers, I think they got blown out actually that game, so there was no way he's going to play 29, 30 minutes. So if he sees those kind of minutes here today versus uh, Brooklyn, I think he's in a good spot. Uh, and after that, man, the power forwards get pretty thin. I'm not really liking any of the power forwards here. A.B., Josh Smith or something like that. Let's see. The minutes he's getting. Nah, the minutes aren't even there. And I think Terrence Jones is back, actually, so that might be wrong to him. Let's see if T. Jones is back. Yeah, Terrence Jones is back, so definitely a fade for Josh Smith. Now, the centers, this is the hardest spot for me today. I'm, I'm not really a fan of Brooke Lopez versus Tyson Chandler and Len. Uh, I think they're pretty solid defenders. Vucevic, that price tag is just too much for me versus Golden State. I can't pay it. Now, Dwight's worth a look. Let's see what he did versus them last time. 45, 42. So, he's been abusing Portland. Uh, so, I like him here, man. Uh, I think he's in a good spot. A lot of the focus is going to be on uh, James Harden. So, I think that's probably going to open up a bunch of shots here. Game's definitely going to be up in pace. They're, look at how close the spread is for a fast-paced game. So, uh, 218, three and a half, man. Uh, definitely like Dwight Howard a lot here today. Uh, probably look elsewhere because I think there's a guy, there's a guy that I'm sold on today, but uh, Dwight Howard is definitely not in a bad spot. Greg Monroe versus the Boston Bigs. He, this is a, this is a good spot for him here. He's kind of killed them all. He's kind of killed, killed these guys. Uh, 30 minutes, 29 and 12. Sheesh. Now let's go see how many times he played them. I want to see if that was actually consistent. And that's the one spot where you can attack Boston at is with the big men. And we all know Greg Monroe's a elite scorer as far as the bigs go. So uh, let's see. Okay, in the two games versus Boston, he's averaging 23 and 13. Uh, we're not going to look at the last one. We're just going to look at the one before that, see what he did too. So. Uh, what the hell? I can't find it. So in the first game versus them, 17 and 14. And I'm um, at that price, man. Uh, might not, might it might be worth it, man. But uh, I told you guys, I'm already sold on a center day. Uh, so I'll look elsewhere. Um, Rudy Gobert. I told you that that game is a fade for me. Maybe Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan might actually be sneaky if he sees 28 minutes versus Utah. I think he might do a little something. But the pace is so bad, I don't want to touch it. Plumlee a fade. And the only center that I'm really sold on today is Ennis Cantor versus New Orleans. They are horrible versus centers. They're really not going to be able to rebound much with them. And I just love Ennis Kerr today, man. If he sees twenty, if he sees 20, over 20 minutes today, which I expect him to, uh, there's no way that he's not going to feast versus this New Orleans second uh, second unit. So uh, I love Kerr, man. Let's go take a look at his usage. And then we're going to make a lineup and end the video like that. But, uh, okay, let's see. Okay. So, in the last three games, a 27.1 usage rate, that's through the roof. So, uh, man, I, I pretty much lock him in my tournament lineup. Uh, this is just a free roll thing, but uh, we, we're definitely going to put in some some bread into cash and to tournament. So, uh, don't worry about that. So, right now, we're going to lock in Kenner in the lineup. Power forwards, I like, uh, I like Thaddeus a little bit. I like Thaddeus. I like Jabari. And I told you guys, I'm kind of sold on KD and Evan Turner. Maybe Bojan, man. Maybe Bojan opens stuff up. So, uh, we can actually, we'll see when we get to those plots, though. I'm kind of almost sold on Fournier and Oladipo here. So, maybe if we can, we can go Curry. Look, we can go Curry. We get downgrade. Maybe we could downgrade Turner to... Get down, great turn of the bow John. See what that opens up. Then that gets. Oh, it only allows us 58. Oh, I don't like that. Man, maybe if we're bold enough in tournaments, we can even do this. Uh, we can just say, like, okay, we're fading KD. Go on Turner. Go on Turner now. Gives us 10.3 to work with. Uh. We could we could probably go we'll probably go with a, a Lillard here or Drew Holiday. I like Drew Holiday a lot, especially at home. So we'll go Drew Holiday here. We can look for another spot to upgrade. Damn, mm, where can we upgrade there? Let's see. It's kind of tough. I don't know where to upgrade. Cause I'm not really touching these high-priced power forwards. I'm sold on Ennis Cantor, so. 
unless you're gonna upgrade small for it. Unless you wanna get too unless you wanna get risky and play Kawhi, which I don't wanna do. No, I'm not doing that. I'm gonna turn up Bull John. I like Ola Debo a lot today. And Fournier. So maybe we can just pay up for Lillard. You can pay up for Lillard and then then I told you guys, in case there's a blowout, I feel like this guy's going to have a lot to do with it. So we could pay up for Selinger. So I think that could work for a free roll, man, honestly. So uh, let me know what you guys think about that, man. Um, and actually, I want to make another one more lineup. We're going to clear this out. Cantor's going to be stable in it, though. Uh, let's see. Cantor. I want to have some exposure to Sloan, so... I'm going to have some exposure to Sloan. I think Sloan's in a great spot here versus Phoenix. We definitely have to have KD in this one then. KD. Keep Turner here. Power forward. We can go. Go back to the Thaddeus. We go back to the Thaddeus. Maybe Jabari. Or we can, mm, Jabari's been producing. Though. I don't know. And the bigs is where you want to attack Boston. So I like him there. Point guard. We can go Drew. Shungar, let's see what happens, Kurt. James Harden, then let's see how much we got. And we got enough for Wayne Ellington in a great spot like that. So uh, that, that's super contrarian, man. I think that could be a great spot. So uh, with that being said, man, we're definitely going to come to an end on this video. I appreciate you guys watching it. Make sure to give this a thumbs up. Subscribe if you like. So uh, I'm going to head out of here. Hopefully we earn some money today. Peace.